Hello and welcome. In this video we talk about object boundary seams, I show you why they happen at all, and I will tell you two ways for fixing this issue. To understand what I mean, let us start with a prominent example, and take a look at the Second Life avatar. So, when you use the public available character templates for your meshes, then you typically end up with importing three separate parts, the head, the upper body, and the lower body. However, when you raise this character in Second Life, then you will always see seams where the body parts match. And this happens even though the boundary vertices match perfectly. You can see this best when you look at the character without textures, as shown in this example. So, what exactly is going wrong here? And why don't we see these seams on the default Second Life avatar? Let's turn to Blender and reduce our character to a much simpler model. This object contains only two separated triangles, and so it has six vertices. However the two triangles match along one edge, thus the edges overlap perfectly. And the triangles are located on the same plane, so they create an absolutely flat surface. When we look at them in object mode, then we cannot spot the matching triangle edge, and the object looks like a perfect flat quad from any viewing angle. And when we move a light source in a circle around the triangles, then we can see how the meshes reflect the light. So obviously we see a dependency on the angle between the light rays and the object surface. But both triangles can still not be visually distinguished. Let's rotate one of the triangles a bit while keeping the matching edge attached to the other mesh. And now check again how the meshes reflect the light. Suddenly, we can clearly spot the matching edge, because the angles between the surfaces and the light rays now differ for both triangles. Hence the amount of reflected light differs as well, and the edge gets visible. And we will see later that this different orientation of adjacent faces actually causes the visual seams along the object boundaries. Technically the orientation of faces in space is described by a three-dimensional vector, the face normal. So, let's check how the face normals look for our primitive object. In Blender you can enable the display of normals in edit mode. Open the view properties sidebar by clicking on the little plus sign in the upper right corner of the 3D view. Then locate the mesh display panel. And there. Enable the display of the face normals. The face normals are actually displayed in a light blue color. They always start at the geometric center of the face. Each face has exactly one face normal. And this normal always points perpendicular to the face's surface. So, turning back to our test object, we see that actually it is the angle between the face normals and the light rays which defines how much light will be reflected from a face. So, when the angle between the face normal and the light ray is 90 degrees, as shown here, then no light will be reflected at all, hence the face is rendered in black. And the highest amount of light gets reflected when the angle between the light rays and the face normal is 0 degrees. So let's examine again in detail what happens when the light rotates around the triangles in a full circle. Here you can see nicely that a triangle shines brightest, when the light hits its surface at a zero angle. And since the triangles are oriented differently in space, the zero angle is reached at different times. Thus it is now very clear why the two triangles always look different, and why we now can see the edge except in the case where no light at all is reflected by both of the triangles. Now let's make another example. This is a simple triangulated quad. The only difference to the other object is, here we have one single mesh made out of two connected triangles, and both triangles now share one edge. While in the first example we had two separate meshes which only matched along one single edge. Let's see how this quad reflects the light, and how it compares to the first example. Well, 
Obviously both objects behave very similar. But hold on, if all of this is true, then a character should look much more faceted. Actually we should see every single edge of the mesh, because all faces usually have different face normals. And so we have to expect to see the mesh like this. But apparently this is not the case on most characters. Well, in Blender we find an option for smooth shading. This option effectively turns off the faceted look of the mesh, and this results in much smoother surfaces. So let's see now how this option affects the lighting. Oh, that's good, now the dark and light parts blur at the edge, and you can no longer see the triangles. Now let us apply smooth shading to our first example as well. Oh, now this does not work as expected, for some reason the facets remain visible, regardless whether we set the shading to smooth or to flat. And when we take a more detailed look on the second example, then we see the light is now rendered with a gradient. So, do you wonder why meshes with matching edges and meshes with shared edges show such different behavior? Do you ask yourself how a single face can show a varying light reflection over its surface? And do you want to know what all of this has to do with smooth and flat shading? Well, by now we suspect that something more complicated must be going on, and we need to go into the details next.